In just the last few years, video games have become a sport unto themselves. Video games became a phenomenon back in the early 80s. Gaming back in the 80s was sort of innocent. The early arcades in, uh, in the early 80s were really, really cool. Kind of a little subculture. There was an atmosphere there where you gained reputations. Video games kind of seduced us in a funny sort of way. It's the coming age, computers. Space Invaders came. Those kind of games started coming out. And that kind of exploded in the arcade. Lit by purple lights and all kinds of crazy stuff. Guys that would literally live in the arcade. The 1980 Pac-Man took over. I like to play Pac-Man because it's exciting. We always check out the high scores and try to conquer them. First you wanted to be the best in the arcade. Then you wanted to be the best in any arcade in the area. I literally play 24-7. T-shirt is a big part of it. If you don't have a T-shirt, you're nobody. And it was a research as to where it was these scores were collected. No one knew what the world records were. I went on my own pilgrimage to try and find noted video game stars, and it wasn't too long after that that I actually opened my own video game arcade. Twin Galaxies, the most famous video arcade in the world. We're the Twin Galaxy scoreboard. We're keeping the scores. People say, oh, I've got the world's record on Pac-Man, or I've the record on this, but they never really knew. If you want to know the world's record, all you have to do is call. Before we knew it, we would be called a hundred times a day. I'm going to keep playing and playing until I have at least ten or more world records. Billy Mitchell was the most successful player back during that golden era of gaming. I decided I was going to break the record on Centipede, so I just started Friday night and Sunday I finished, I played 47 hours and I had to stop at 25 million and one. I figured I'd get one, that way I can always say I went over 25 million. They crowned me the video game player of the century, not just for the world record on Pac-Man, but the world record on Donkey Kong, Centipede, Burger King, Donkey Kong Jr., Miss Pac-Man. No. The craze of high scores took on a national interest. Arcade gunslinging led to high scores being set and broken sometimes in the same day. Right at the center was Twin Galaxies. Life magazines come to Tumwa, Iowa to capture a unique moment in America's video game history. And what we've done is brought 16 or 17 of the world's greatest video game players here to perform on their selected machines. All these players will be on That's Incredible. Tonight, we're hosting the first ever That's Incredible Video Game Invitational. The first place finisher will receive a gold medal, the second place finisher a silver medal, and the third place finisher a bronze medal. Now, this game is called Burger Time, and it plays fast and furious. One of our most famous uh, uh, events was when we went on the road in a 44-foot bus in the summer of 1983. And in that bus was about eight or nine or ten big full-size arcade games, and we would stop different places and have people come in and face off and challenges with us, and we'd go into arcades and face, take on all comers. And my team of superstars never lost to anybody during that era because they were so good. Like all pop culture explosions, the wave was short-lived. By 1984, the arcade scene was drying up. Arcades that had once been packed were now closing their doors, and arcade stars had no way of extending their 15 minutes of fame. The fact is, everybody wanted to do it for a living, and the truth is, nobody did. There were too many people with too many arcades and too many games that they owned too much money on, and everything went down the tubes in what is called the 1984 bust. Things began again. What was once the golden age of video games became the classic age of video games. In 1986, Nintendo released the Nintendo Entertainment System, or NES. Mario and Luigi became household names, and a whole generation was raised with games at home. The popularity of the NES relit the fire of competitive video gaming. The, the blockbuster world championships came and they flew everybody to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And you would individually play the game and just try to get a high score. I was actually first throughout most of the day of competition. The next morning, I was interviewed on Good Morning America. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. First World Championships, and you guys are among the top finishers. Uh, how does it feel? Great. It feels amazing. <laughs> yeah. 
there were certain kinds of uh, video game competitions in Game Pro Magazine that they would advertise in there, and they're usually high score based, and you had to take a picture. I was first in four of them, and I was tied for first on the fifth one. And when it came time to pay, the lady told me the check was in the mail, the prize money was on its way, and I never saw a dime of it ever. 